The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Claire Sherry here from the Improvement Service, and I work in the Change Management Team. I'm also joined by my colleague Joanna Erickson today. So thanks very much for taking the time to join us. We've got Terry Hogg and Chloe Purvis from Scottish Enterprise who are going to be chatting us through the Can Do Innovation Fund. Just before I pass over to Terry and Chloe, just, um, just to be aware throughout the webinar, if you've got any questions at all, there should be a panel on your right hand side, the little grey box in your screen. And if you just type anything in there at all, Joanna and I will pick them up at the end and uh, read them out for Terry and Chloe. So without further ado, I'll just pass you over to Terry for the presentation. Thanks very much. Thanks, Claire. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for attending uh, our webinar today. Um, really, I'm going to flip through a few slides. Uh, I, I don't envisage to spend any more than sort of 15, 20 minutes sort of describing this new innovation fund, which we very much hope um, is, is of interest and potential value to you. And what I'm really going to do is just uh, take you through what the fund is, um, how it's structured, how it benefits uh, you, the public sector. Um, I will show, show you a few examples of, of, of types of projects that have been through our fund and, and similar funds, just to give you a, a, an idea of the of the range of applications that it would be useful for, and actually just show you the mechanics of how it works and and just um, stress the, the sort of requirements and what, what we're looking for, and sort of the, the fact that we've got a an open call just now, uh, which closes on the 15th of June. So hopefully the, the fund will be of interest, um, will stimulate some some interest from the, the audience there uh, and some applications. But uh, but in the meantime, we're obviously available to, to answer any questions on it. Uh, at the end of this webinar, and also I'm more than happy as the contact details will be provided to take uh, calls and, and follow up questions if required. So I'm just going to step through the the presentation then. So I suppose the first thing to, 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 to state is the, the can do is maybe unusual for folks. It certainly was when I first came across it, but this is a, a new national innovation fund. I'm actually technically employed by Scottish Enterprise and we're leading the fund but on behalf of the other organisations you can see there, Highlands Island, Scottish Funding Council and the Scottish Government in terms of a, a Team Scotland approach. So it is all of the, the Scottish agencies involved here. Um, and really um, it's a little bit of a departure from uh, our normal way of, of supporting innovation. Normally Scottish Enterprise and, and, and innovations agencies will support uh, innovative companies who have innovative, innovative technologies and who are looking to get to marketplace and provide advice and typically grant support. Uh, and I think this is recognising that as well as that good work, there's an opportunity for us to actually flip that round a little bit and say, well, are we missing a trick here in terms of where we know there's large organisations or, or, or organisations who have needs for innovation, um, have new product needs, new service needs to help them deliver their, their services that we could utilise to um, provide signals to the marketplace, to, to, to engage with them, to come forward. and and solve the problems of the of the public sector and use that to, to, to stimulate and support innovation but also improve public sector service delivery. So the innovation fund is a, a new fund that's able to offer support to you, the public sector, to help to identify, define your what we term innovation challenges, your need for new products and services, and then engage with innovative supply chain companies. So we we do it's it's been of interest in terms of the first call which I'll describe, but we really do think it's of potential value to folks in the public sector like yourself who are maybe wrestling with you know service delivery, policy delivery challenges. If you've carried on the obvious things that maybe you're needing a, a little look at um, what other folks are doing, what other companies are out there who maybe have innovative ideas to, to, to help you. So that's the, the sort of general overview of, of, of the fund. I'll go into a bit more a bit more uh, detail there. So in terms of the um, the procurement of innovation approach, so it's a, a fund that's set up to support you, the public sector, to, to address your, your innovation challenges. And as I say, it's a little bit unusual in that what the fund does is provide you, the public sector, with support. So um, you know, depending on the nature of, of your challenge, we will support you to uh, address it by taking your innovation challenge to the marketplace. So the fund will provide you with funding up to 100%. Um, to then uh, and, and support I should add as well support to um, define your challenge um, specify it in the form of a 
of a, a, a brief, a challenge to the marketplace, will then um, support you to take it out to the marketplace and reach a, a large network of innovative companies. Uh, and it will offer R&D service contracts to innovative companies. So it's a, a, a different approach to your normal grant-based approach. So it's actually providing innovative companies with uh, contracts, uh, R&D service contracts. So that's the first point to, to mention there. It is a slightly different approach. It's starting with your innovation need, taking it to the, 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 the supply chain in the form of a procurement exercise and you're procuring R&D services. And we will support with our colleagues from Innovate UK you through that process. We've got a suite of um, standard documents which are um, legally robust, which can help you to go through the process and say the team would be supporting you through that. Uh, and this slide here is really just to, to try and explain that. It's a slightly different approach. So apologies if it maybe seems a little bit more detail, but I think I'm not going to get into all the detail, but I just think it's important just to, to stress how the the fund and the, the mechanics behind the fund work, as I say, is a, a little bit different. So, um, in this example, you've seen various phases, um, and it really starts with, to say, that, that, that innovation challenge. Your problem is, is and we've, the team have worked with you to, to, to define it and articulate it in a, a functional specification. So, we're not asking for specific technology solutions. We're just saying we have a, a problem here, and here is its here's our functional requirements, here's what we need from you, the, the marketplace, and we go out to the marketplace in the form of a, an R&D service tender, and um, we seek responses to that innovation challenge. Now, in this instance, what's happened is we have, um, through that exercise, and, and you know, and, and encouraged proposals from a, a number of uh, uh, supply chain companies, and uh, as you'll see in the phase one diagram there, we have decided that suppliers A, B, and C, and D are the four best uh, proposals, and the uh, procurement innovation approach procures services from all of those four suppliers who have, uh, you know, the best proposals to address your your innovation challenge, and it funds them all. It funds them all through 100% funded R&D contracts to develop and prove their concepts at that phase one um, solution um, design phase. Now, so before that, the competition was open to the marketplace. Those four suppliers are then on a closed and phased procurement um, process. So, um, for argument's sake, say we run that competition, that, that phase one for six months. can be any time, but picking six months is an arbitrary figure there. It's smallest digital challenge, maybe maybe, uh, maybe quicker than that. But let's, for argument's sake, we've, we've funded all those suppliers to develop their concepts over a six month period and they have um, come forward with their presentations and their proposals of how their concept has been developed through that period. You're then evaluating those and then you're dropping in to then fund the best three of those in this instance through into developing their the best concepts through into prototype development and testing. Um, that may be, say, per argument, say, you know, take maybe say 12 months type thing as a physical product. Again, digital products would be a lot, a lot quicker. You then take the best prototypes through into field trial and testing with the marketplace. So suppliers B and D have made it through. So the idea is that you see you'd start off with that innovation challenge, functional specification, go to the marketplace, select the best proposals, but then fund them on a phased and competitive nature to develop and prove their concepts. Now, for you, the public sector, what this approach allows you to do is to, one, uh, you know, uh, get solutions that are customised and tailored to your particular requirements. So rather than look at, you know, trying to shoehorn in off-the-shelf products and technology, it's looking at a genuine innovation, a customised solution to your needs. But it allows you to really explore the solution space, to really explore what's out there from you know, different supply chains, different sectors, different ideas about how you could address your, your challenge. And it's also that phase in nature is allowing you to be sure and the competitive nature that you've really explored ideas at that early stage and that you're taking the best ideas through at each point in the process. Now, that's assuming that it meets your requirements. There's no, obviously, no um, obligation on anyone to proceed through all the phases if what they're getting is not not suitable. But it just allows you to really explore that that, that solution space. Um, from a, a company perspective, the supplier perspective, it's given them an opportunity to address a, a real challenge that you have with a real potential market, and it's allowing them 
as well as the 100% contract, it's allowing them to proceed all the way to field trial and testing um, in your environment. And that, that's really important in that in our experience of, of, of innovation support, almost the, the most difficult um, and biggest barrier to innovation success is, is finding that first customer. Plenty of support there to develop technology, come up with a prototype, but realistically, you know, um, it, it's, it's often difficult to get that first customer because most customers really want evidence of a, a reference site of a, another customer where your technology has worked that maybe they can go and see and, and can go and talk to. This process is really attractive to, for our point of view and is proving attractive to the company's perspective in that it starts with that in mind. So as challenge sponsors, as well as identifying your innovation challenge, you need to be mindful of well, where are you going to test this? How are you going to prove that this, this works? That's obviously in your interest, but from a company perspective, that addresses one of the biggest barriers to, to, to innovation. So that's the, the model. I thought it was worth just stepping you through because it's a, a, a different type of, a, of support. It's really looking at procuring innovative solutions, procuring R&D services from the marketplace rather than on a competitive basis, rather than grant funding uh, specific uh, individual companies. So we've been stepping through, and I just thought, again, what the technical detail on this is, is, is irrelevant to a certain extent, but what I wanted to do is just to paint you through a, a paint a picture of where we've come on our, our travels from um, initial pilots that develop in the fund and through that to show you the types of the range I suppose of types of challenges and organizations we've been working with just to hopefully give you an idea of the flexibility but maybe to stimulate some thinking and, and you know, related or, 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 or similar challenges that you may, you may have of yourself. You may be interested in some of the solutions that's coming through as a potential market adopter but certainly hopefully the the sectors and, and, and scale of innovation challenges allow you to, to think a bit more creatively and, and wide-rangingly in terms of challenges you may have, your organisation may have that's suitable for the fund. So um, we started looking at initial pilot projects just to really get our, our, our thinking around how this technique worked. It's completely different from what we've done before. You know, we're used to funding individual companies, so you know it was a good experience for us to to go through it and also to trial the processes. Um, and the uh, the procedures that's involved and develop our own internal capabilities. So it's been useful in that regard. So just on this slide, you see a, a range of initial pilot projects I've been working on. And just to give you some idea of the sort of difference in scale and, and nature of them, we worked with Scottish Water on a, a project that was addressing um, water treatment, taking nasty chemicals out of um, out of water called prior to substances and um, that project uh, went to the marketplace and procured um, R&D services from seven um, winning proposals and funded them all £40,000 each to develop their and, and test their, their concepts. It then took uh, a number three companies through into a, a detailed prototype and development phase um, to take those concepts through into testing with, with Scottish Water and contracts for sort of 150 sort of 200k marks were quite chunky in terms of the, the scale of funding but it's obviously looking at you know physical products there. Um, NHS Scotland, um, other area we've been looking at is on the, the e-health, so the digital based products. We've been working with NHS Scotland colleagues on a couple of areas, looking at one uh, first project we worked with them was diabetes education, particular type 1 diabetes, and improving the educational um, experience um, for particularly uh, young team, 15 to 24 year olds, who typically are very difficult to engage with the traditional class-based uh, educational diabetes education products that's out there. So we had a number of um, companies bid in to, to develop innovative approaches to using digital technology to, to, to educate and help folks manage their conditions. We ended up funding five companies all to develop competing concepts um, and it was 30k contracts over six months. Uh, we then took the best two of those through and they're at the, 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 the prototype and demonstration phase at, at the moment and both of those companies were uh, awarded £150,000 over 12 months to, to develop and test those those concepts. And similar in dermatology, we're looking at um, a similar scale of exercise, five companies at 30k who uh, have all been developed concepts to improve dermatology services. Now that's more on 
and this will probably be an, uh, there'll be an analogy there to other public sectors, but there's a, a finite resource of specialists and increasing demand, and could we use digital technologies to, to manage that, that, that workflow, that, that service uh, in a more effective way, getting the, the right information from the, the patients or the user of the service to the right um, delivery agents within the, the service at the right time. Um, and that, I'm sure that that area is probably relevant to a lot of public sector service delivery. It's certainly relevant to all aspects of healthcare provision at the moment. So that project's just uh, closed and we've just selected um, two of the, 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 the best of those five concepts to go forward for 12 months and again 150k projects to develop the, the prototypes and test them in the NHS uh, testbed environment. At the other end of the scale, we've um, two projects uh, that are running um, smaller scale digital projects, um, and these are of the, the sort of 30k total um, project value. And just to show you the range, and you can get everything in between. But within Transport Scotland, we've been looking at um, projects to use the the data infrastructure um, alongside the the A9 development as a way of um, piggybacking services on top of. Um, so there's a couple of projects there. One that's using the data infrastructure and uh, mobile technology to basically allow businesses along the A9 to advertise in a really customised and informed way their services to, to, to users of the A9 as they, they, they travel up and down it with the, the, the goal of uh, encouraging them to to stop off and spend some of their, their time and, and money in the local area. And another project looking at uh, using um, phones and, uh, and accelerometer sensors and phones to, to pick up vibrations and determine the, the status of road to feed back into to an O and M area. Um, and those are very small scale projects. They funded um, three companies each to develop concepts or work up concepts over a two-week period with £2,000 each, and then funded um, one company, the best solution, 15K over a three-month period to develop and test those concepts. And I've actually had a, a, you know, a success already with that project and a, a system the, for the A9, which is um, in terms of the, the, uh, the ability to, to um, provide, a, I suppose, a digital radio service into the, into the vehicle, uh, which has now been picked up by the, uh, the North 500 folks to, 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 to implement into their, their um, uh, facility as well. So that's a nice example of a very, very small scale project, which is essentially using the same principle. It's procuring innovation from the supply chain uh, and, and feeding through the, the, the best companies in a competitive way. And similarly with SEPA, again, same small scale projects, looking at air quality and flood modeling and forecast. And air quality was a, a sensor based project looking at you know very low cost sensors and, and rivers and, and linking into a data system. Flood modeling was more about the, the, the modeling of um, uh, that data through the, the, uh, the, the, the water basin as well and how you could predict better. Uh, where things and where problems were going to be, but again, all of them were really small scale. So we've got the other end. We've got the, the sort of 750k project with Scottish Water to the the 30k project with SEPA, and everything in between is, is is available and allowable. Depends on the nature of the, the challenge and your uh, and your organisation's uh, appetite and the, I suppose the fund appetite as well. But it's just to say, it's really flexible in terms of the the sector and and the scale. A bit of detail there, but just to say there is established procedures, suites of documents that we can use and, and, and teams that we can support you with the, the process. The one we've been using on the larger scale projects is called the Small Business Research Initiative run by Innovate UK. It's been around for about 10 years. It's tried and tested. And on the smaller scale projects we've been running with our colleagues in Scottish Government Digital um, Directorate on a, an accelerator based in Edinburgh, which marries up the procurement with business acceleration and their um, facility in Edinburgh, through a, um, a location that's uh, called Codebase, just quite near, near the Edinburgh Castle. So a suite of different um, processes and, and, and options available to you. But again, we would make that very clear and, and, and help you access the relevant process and support. So in terms of the, the, the fund itself, um, so I mentioned a Team Scotland approach. It's a, a £9.2 million pounds fund over four years. So we're moving from the, the pilot stage, gathering the partners together, one 
cohesive offering from Scotland rather than us all doing individual pilots, which we were doing before, and scaling up a little bit. We've got aspirations to make this much bigger, as I'll explain in a little minute, but for now it's 9.2 million over four years with the view of proving the success and growing it over that, that period. Um, and again, key features are it, it supports you, the public sector, to address innovation challenges, reducing your risk, and optimising solutions are described through that phase development. And again, there's good evidence that this approach can, you know, by having a customised solution, can optimise your service delivery, your ability to deliver your service. But also, there's good evidence that the uh, long-term procurement costs are reduced as well. From a company's perspective, um, that, that first customer is critical. That is the number one barrier to innovation, as far as we're concerned. This starts with that in, in place. But also, and important to be mindful of is what we're looking for that is to as well be a solution for you is there to be markets out with you that they could then sell on to as well and ideally a springboard into export markets from an economic development perspective it gives them 100 percent funding through r d contracts and importantly and this might not suit all challenges in the public sector maybe particular ones you want to co-develop co-own but the, the, the ethos behind this is you get a customised solution, which you're then able to, to procure, a solution that was not available in the marketplace, but the company retains the right to exploit the intellectual property behind that um, and obviously stimulate economic development from that. Uh, and again, we've spent a bit of time, we're, we're, to a certain extent, we're a little bit behind the curve in Scotland in getting involved in this, but we've used that time to our advantage and managed to have a good look at what others are doing across the, the globe. Um, the most well established is the is the US system, you know, the so called freest of free markets is from the, the early eighties been um using its federal um agencies to identify innovation challenges that they have and actually fund uh, R and D server contracts which um are aimed at the US SME market. Uh, as I say, that's went through successive um, regimes, Democrats, Republicans, and only grown through time. And it's now mandated, it's now embedded in their system. And roughly, I think it's now two and a half billion dollars per annum is injected into their economy through that to improve federal services, but also to stimulate economic development. And uh, closer to home, our UK SBRI scheme is, is about 75 million through in 2015. I think last calendar year, we we uh, roughly calculated about 65 million was through it as well, so it's quite a sizable investment. And latterly, our colleagues in Wales and Northern Ireland are running similar funds to ourselves, albeit a little bit smaller. So there's a good network and, and good, you know, network of potential buyers that we can tap into as well, as well as uh, challenge solvers. So I just, I'm not going to get into detail. I just wanted to, to maybe to sort of list these and just have you be able to, to have a look at these. If anyone wants. Um, detailed information on, on these um, innovation challenges that have been funded through the, the SBRI route, we can easily provide them. But the point of this next couple of slides is just, again, just to show you the, the variety and hope to, 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 to allow you to, to see the, the flexibility uh, in, the, in the approach. So, yeah, the first one up there is just a very, very small scale thing. You know, how can you use clever signage to improve, uh, you know, um, stair use and, and, and improve exercises? And at first, quite a small challenge, quite a, a narrow market, you would think, but that actually has taken off, and there's the winning companies now um, supplying that to organisations and 90, 90 companies, it's, and it's increased the, the stair use, as you can see there, with 20 to 40 percent, so sometimes it doesn't need to be the most you know, sexy challenge, if I can use that, that, that phrase, you know, it's quite, a, quite a, a practical thing there that required innovation and, you know, improved uh, impact on society, but also uh, economic development there. Um, another side of things, um, we did at the bottom there, reduce the motorcycle casualties. It's our Welsh colleagues who developed a, a, a really innovative uh, helmet approach, which um, already has um, been taken on board in terms of the motorcycle um, helmet manufacturers, and they're already seeing potential to, to really impact on, on the, um, the terrible casualties that motorcycle um, users are, are, are suffering from uh, crashes. Um, so that one's been quite interesting too. Bringing it back to maybe some local authority usage. Well, local authority, again, in Wales has looked at providing temporary power where there's not mains. So they looked at a really innovative renewable energy, portable renewable energy system that could be developed and uh, moved from, from site to site as they need it. That one's shown early success too. 
And just listing a few other ones there. Well, I mean, supposing to, you know, the real end of the high scale, um, there was a college in Northern Ireland looking at the problem they've got is, you know, lots of chickens with lots of litter, not a lot of uses for them. Um, so they looked at uh, using the SBRI, the Procurement of Innovation route, to explore innovative solutions. And that was a fairly chunky uh, project, um, up to sort of, I think it was 750 in the sort of phase one, phase two exercise. Um, but they then linked that into a grant support, which so obviously capital equipment for a, a waste energy plant is what it turned out to be. But they managed to flush out the, the technology, develop the R&D solution, and then find um, a, a loan funding route to then take it into to implementation. And it's a you know, multi-million pounds operation. So it can be at that level. But as I say, back to the digital, it can be at the smaller level as well. Um, another one worth mentioning probably for local authorities are uh, again, our colleagues in Northern Ireland ran a, a, a challenge based on the difficulties that the, the, the Northern Irish um, um, Belfast Authority have in collecting, or sorry, knowing who's in which building to in order to determine their, their occupancy, their use, and therefore their business rates that they're due. Um, went from a very manual process to a, an electronic process. And again, it sounds pretty basic, but that one, I think the overall investment was about £200,000. and it paid back within the first six months, and it's looking at a really successful project. Again, small scale uh, digital challenge. And again, at the other element of the scale, uh, there was a, uh, a fairly recent project looking at uh, retrofit um, energy efficiency solutions, working with a number of re uh, registered social landlords, and again, funding conceptual designs, but then funding that in terms of integration into into uh, social housing. So again, not going to dwell too much on that, just really wanted to, to paint the picture of the, the, the variety of uh, challenges that can be addressed through this mechanism. And again, if anyone wants specific information, detailed information and contacts for any of these challenges, please just ask at the end or, or, or get in touch with us through the contact details. So moving on to where we are with the funds, that's giving you an idea about the fund, its mechanism, the types of challenges. We have um, launched our first call um, and we have funded our first five projects and they are, um, and yeah, in order of, of uh, launching, we have a, a smart EV charging system from the City of Edinburgh Council. So we funded them to, to address the the challenge of providing electrical infrastructure, um, charging infrastructure, uh, as the as the demand for electric vehicles increases, and the, the policy is to is to take the uh, internal combustion engines off of the market. Um, but obviously, local authorities are are exercised with how to do that in a, a sustainable way. So this project is exploring how to link um, low carbon renewable energy with battery storage technology with innovative control technology, and that's probably the key to the challenge that's looking at, can we uh, forecast and predict demand for um, the uh, charging infrastructure, uh, the availability of renewable energy, and also the price and the, the grid, or the electricity district network operators uh, and market will pay for electricity, but also the value they press on um, um, good services such as things like frequency control. So it's basically money to be made by providing services and and um, power into into the grid. And so it's looking at an innovative way where you can optimise the the system to to reduce uh, the capital cost and running cost of, of that infrastructure. So that project just kicked off, and we've funded four um, companies to develop their concepts, just awarding contracts at the moment, and that's of £20,000 each to, to explore their concepts, and the best two of those will be taken potentially through to a, a, a phase two uh, prototype demo infrastructure. Um, so a prototype demo and infrastructure uh, within the city of Edinburgh region, but we're looking obviously at a wider rollout through our local authority co colleagues. Um, next up, yeah, something that doesn't sound too innovative, you know, CCTV systems, but this is looking at, you know, a, a self-powered, flexible CCTV system with South Ayrshire Council. Currently, CCTV systems are fixed in the ground, capital intensive, you, you know, um, linked into to grid power. And once they're up, they're obviously up. So can we provide a, a flexible system that's lower cost, that doesn't require 
um, ideally mains power and could be um, put up and taken down and moved to places of interest with one person in a, in a, in a short period of time. And we are uh, launched that and we're just about to, to make the funding decision uh, this week on five companies who will be given £30,000 contracts to develop their, their concepts. Um, Scotch Water's next up in distributed water treatments. This is looking at challenges in a rural area. Um, you know, I'm sure most folks have encountered uh, off-water grid water supplies at a time can be quite brown, quite peaty at times. So this is looking at, you know, not just the, the, the visually uh, available pollutants, but looking at even smaller organic solids and can you take that out of the water supply at a, a sort of point of view, say single dwelling or, or small number of dwellings scale? Um, can you test it in the, the Scottish uh, water environment? Um, but that obviously has international market. I think there's 300 million folks around the world without access to clean water supply. So if we can prove it here, we can distribute it and sell it elsewhere. Um, that just closed last week, that competition, and we um, will be intending to fund the best five proposals, 30k each, over six months to develop their, their concepts. Uh, technology and enable care probably apply to a lot of local authorities. Well, it will apply to all local authorities. And this is an area of um, so social care, health and social care, and, and real pressures on elderly population, shrinking budgets. And this particular challenge is focused on a, some of our most disadvantaged, challenged individuals in, in, in Glasgow City Council who require um, overnight services, um, which can be quite intrusive. You know, it's effectively you know babysitting people, which is needed, and I'm not and to cry in that, but from a you know a, a, a sort of citizen point of view, if we can provide something that's maybe less invasive, uh, that would be that would be useful. But certainly from a cost perspective, that's a really costly service as well. So can we provide that in a more cost-effective manner? So it's looking at uh, innovative technologies which can monitor um, status, behaviour, um, and various signals that within the within the home that would alert folks to the fact that an intervention, uh, a physical presence was, was needed, um, and that's linked into the whole shift from uh, digital, sorry, analog to digital infrastructure. And it is so it's Glasgow specific, but it's tied in with a, a national technology enabled care objective. And the, the view would be if we can crack it there for Glasgow, we could roll the solution out through the other uh, local authorities and health and social care partnerships. And lastly, we've got surgical instrument cleaning. Not going into too much detail with that for obvious reasons, but we've got a um, a project where we're looking at improving the efficiency and environmental impact of the surgical instrument cleaning process with NHS Highland. And again, like Glasgow and the others, we're funding five companies, 30k best five proposals, um, to develop the concept over a six-month period with a, a potential phase two of uh, 12 to, to 18 months of uh, support with uh, 150k up to 150k contracts for the the best two solutions out those those five so hopefully that's given you an idea of a, the range of projects that we are currently looking at all of them have commonality and all of them are really impacting on the public purse really have a relevance to the scottish supply chain and have a an international potential larger market opportunity and um, the international doesn't need to be there but that's a the, the scale of the markets key for us, but all of them have a, a serious and, and, and believable intent to implement and procure, which is important. So in terms of the process, um, conscious of time, run over a wee bit here, apologies. So in terms of the process, the fund has two calls per year. Next one's 15th of June, as I mentioned. We stimulate demand through um, efforts like this, and, and, and um, the engagement process is a very, very simple expression of interest form, which is on our website, the web links in this presentation shouldn't take too long once you've identified your challenge to, to articulate and we can help you to, to, to do that if that's required. So we have a call deadline. Once that deadline is reached, we will review all our innovation challenges and we will review them as I've described on their potential value, their impact on public sector service delivery, their potential to offer other markets to Scottish companies and your the, the, the likelihood that you are serious about implementation and procurement. There's too many examples around the world of nice technology demos, but not really a focus on, on implementation. And we'll take the best of those through the, the procurement of innovation route I described. We will work very closely with you to support you in that process, but also to support you to, to implement 
uh, the technologies as well, and we'll also work with the companies to integrate them into business support and support their commercialisation. So that's not the whole story, though. There may be other ways of helping with the challenge. There may be companies that are out there that you just don't know about that we can hook you with that have got solutions already there for your challenges. Um, it may well be that there's other routes such as grant funding that we could utilise uh, to address the challenge as well. The point is that you know it's a single easy entry point with your innovation challenge. We'll help you shape it up. We'll evaluate it and we'll identify the most appropriate support route to to help you to to address it. So that's pretty much the presentation. So hopefully that's described the. So it's a little bit unusual, so I appreciate there might be some questions. But um, but the, the idea is you've got the, the need for a new product, new service. You want to look at the supply chain for an innovative solution. We can help you through that. We can reduce the risk by taking you through this innovative process, this phased stage gate uh, procurement process. We can underwrite the costs up to 100% for that. Um, but the next step is, if you're interested, is to, um, you know, you can talk to us, drop us a, an email if you want to talk it through anymore. But if you are interested, the expression of interest forms are there. Uh, you need to fill them out. But just to stress the, the qualifying and evaluation criteria there again, you know, there needs to be a need for innovation. Now, that's to vary in different degrees. But basically, we need to be confident there's not an existing product or service already out there, but there is a need to to procure research, to develop something specific to your needs. You need to, we'll provide the funding and, and, and project team support, but you need to provide a project management resource. It's important that, that you have ownership of this and that you work to, uh, with support for yourselves, work through the R&D, but certainly um, bring in the relevant folks that can get involved in the implementation and procurement. And that last point stresses that as well. Uh, and I mentioned there, just to stress it again though, you know, we're looking at, the impact on service delivery, um, policy delivery, the impact on the public person, wider society, a market solution out with your organisation. This is about that dual whammy, better services, but obviously uh, opportunity, market opportunity for Scottish companies. Ideal international, but we're not kidding ourselves on that not all challenges have, are of that nature. But basically, we're looking for the ones that can give us the to use that awful phrase, the biggest bang for the buck. And we're we are looking, we're not expecting you this part of our due diligence to to identify challenges that have got a relevance with the, the Scottish supply chain. Because this is a procurement exercise. Once we fund it, once we put it to the market, we cannot favour Scottish companies much as we would we from an economic development point of view would like to, but we would genuinely look for the best solution to meet your needs. But we are trying to place our bets where there's a a, a decent chance that Scottish companies would be able to respond and compete. So, key thing is, there's the website, there's the contact details for the information, and the deadline is the 15th of June. We will be running another call in roughly about six months' time. We'll have a couple of calls through the duration of the project. Um, but I'm not doing the sales pitch, but, but genuinely, the more people know about the fund, the more competitive I think it will be. So, I would encourage you, if you've got ideas, to talk to us and if you're interested to, to shape up a, an application form through the expression of interest. And that's me, apologies, about 10 minutes more than I intended to, to speak there. So um, I suppose I'll stop there and just to see if there's there's any questions. Thanks very much for that, Terry. Um, so just as a reminder, if you have any questions, the question box will be just on your right hand side of your screen. Uh, if anyone wants to ask any questions. Um, so just as a reminder in the meantime to give you um, some time to write out your questions there, um, we will be sharing the recording of today's webinar uh, on the Knowledge Hub. So I will send you a follow-up email after the webinar with the details of how to access this. Um, you will also see a few questions on your screen once the webinar is finished. So it would be greatly appreciated uh, if you do have time to give us some feedback on the, on the webinar. So there's quiet there on the question front, but we will just give people some time to to write out their questions. So there we go. We have a question coming through. Um, hi Terry, if there were two bids that were similar, could PM resource be shared across organisations? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, so if there was two bids that were similar, I suppose the first question we would have is whether the two bids could be combined into one bid. Uh, that's that's one of the things that we're 
obviously with full um, cooperation with um, the chat, what we call the challenge sponsors, but already we're aware that there's, there have been bids that's come in that, that are very similar, maybe in different areas that we've been making connections with. So the first point would be if they're very similar, could they be combined? Um, and yes, I suppose at that point there would be a, a shared PM resource. Um, if they were significantly different, um, we'd share PM resource. So if it was two separate organisations sharing a PM resource, yeah, I mean it's kind of off the uh, the idea with the PM resource is not so much the well, it is obviously a practical someone there to to manage the project, but there's a bit of an ownership thing there as well. So I suppose we would need to we wouldn't rule it out, but we need to be convinced that the organisation that was sharing the resource was was seriously committed to the project and particularly the implementation of it. Um, so that would be the only caveat. So we'd be very open to to discussing that. But I suppose the the, the first point would be if they're very similar, would there be an opportunity to, to combine efforts and and look at a you know, one, there'd be one lead applicant from a, a legal and a contractual point of view, um, but could it be, you know, uh, on behalf of a, uh, you know, a number of different parties who all shared the challenge? I suppose would be the, the first thought. But, but as I say, if we, if, if for whatever reason my my answer isn't fully reflecting your circumstances, then we're more than happy to have a, a quick chat through that if, if it helped. That's great. Thanks very much, Terry. Um, so we've got another question here, kind of following on from that. Um, so it's if there are similar bids or bids that organisation could piggyback onto. Is there anywhere we can see a list of expressions of interest? Yes, that's that's a good point. We have been through the process um, publicising the expressions of interest. We've been publicising them through a couple of means. So um, we used uh, Public Contract Scotland um, to publish the expressions of interest. And it was part of a market testing as well. Uh, but this question has come up a couple of times. So in addition to what we are doing um, for this next call, I think we definitely need to look at um, other channels to flag the expressions of interest to, because we've been, in all honesty, we've been using them mainly to ascertain the potential interest of of Scottish companies, um, and and by virtue of that, allow us to evaluate them. So, you know, we have been communicating that through means that the public sector could get access to. But in all honesty, it's a good question, and I think that certainly it's one that that we can take an action to um, perhaps promote through this channel actually, what we could do is to um, provide a, a list, because within the expression of interest there is a, um, a public description. So we ask folks to give us permission to, to use a, uh, you know, a few sentences to describe their challenge. So um, what we'll take an action on ourselves is to, to maybe come back through your, through yourselves to, to at least highlight the ones that's been in so far. Um, I think that would be useful, both in terms of the, obviously you've seen the ones we're funding, but there are other ones in there that um, we're actually really interested in, in how folks could collaborate and, and, and go forward. For instance, there's a few in the area of uh, how do you match supply and demand from for travel, particularly in sort of rural locations, you know, things like, you know, um, car leasing services and uh, you know the Uber concept that may apply to a sort of rural area. So there's maybe been about five or six challenges in that area when we try to think about how to take them forward. So I've no doubt that if we push forward with and communicate the in a more wider sense to the public sector, the challenges that we're already looking at, there could be further collaborations there. So so yeah, we've been doing it to an extent, but I think it's uh, incumbent on ourselves to look at how we could maybe do more of that to the public sector. So as I say, we'll, we'll put a list together and, and if it's okay, maybe use the the, uh, the improvement service channel to, to promote that. Yeah, that'd be fine, Terry. That's it. Um, just saying there, we could use the knowledge hub, and if there's like a list of expressions of interest, we could stick it on the change managers network mm -hmm. on there for people to see and yep. we can share it yep. that way and through our network. So, yeah, more than happy to do that. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, so, we'll just give people another couple of minutes if there's any other questions coming through. Um, in the meantime, as Terry mentioned, there will be a second webinar on the topic on the 15th of May between 2 and 3 p.m. 
if anyone wants to hear a bit more or will think of any other questions, um, that opportunity will be there. Yeah, what I'd also say is, well, we're, we're, part of the challenges is to try and get the, I mean, we've, we've, we've done okay so far, and, and part of this is, 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 is a, you know, further development of that, but it's, it's, it's actually really difficult to, to get the information um, into the, the right folks, obviously, with limited resources. So what, in addition to that, I would say if anyone feels that, you know, there's others in their organisation, please feel free to, to, to pass on, on the details as well, because part of the challenge is it may not be directly relevant to yourself, but if you've got particular channels, networks, forums within your own organisations, um, maybe come back to us and let us know if you think it would be of interest even to, to, to push out information, but we're more than happy to come along to to groups and, and meet face to face with folks to describe things in a bit more detail, to discuss particular ideas that you may have for this or for, for future calls. So I would just encourage you to, to, to get in touch with us. That's great. Thanks very much, uh, Terry. So I think we're just going to wrap up there. So thanks to everyone who joined today. And thanks very much to you, Terry, for doing the presentation. Is there anything you would like to add before we, we wrap up? Just really thanks for everyone's attention, um, and just just really stress again. Look, you know, if you think it's of interest, you've got an idea, please get in touch, and we can help you to 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 talk it through. Uh, and just thanks to yourselves again for for organising this. It's been really really helpful. Absolutely. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.